Hey everybody, and you're back for another Breeze to Basics video. I hope that you guys are doing well. As you can tell from today's title, we are going to be discussing uh, different kinds of espresso machines. But before I get into that, there are two things I just wanted to mention real quick. One is that, again, I am sorry for the lateness of this video. Um, Wednesdays have been super busy for me uh, these past couple weeks, you know, since I um, have started working more. And luckily though, today, Thursday, the next day, I have some time before I go into work later today, so I um, figured that I had the time to film the video, so let's not do it. And I actually got a decent amount of sleep last night, so I feel pretty energized enough to do it as well. <laughs> um, so yeah, wanted to apologize for that. I'm sorry. And second thing is, can we just appreciate how beautiful this weather is? I'm in a short sleeve shirt right now. like. What's going on? <laughs> it's early November and it's like high 60s here in New Jersey. Um, well, at least, you know, central New Jersey where I live. Um, I just had to mention it because, you know, a couple of days ago, not but two or three days ago, it was absolutely frigid, absolutely frigid. And now it's, I'm in short sleeves. I'm just in shock and I had to share it. <laughs> um, and I'm very thankful for the beautiful weather. Anyways, um, so, as we can tell from today's title, we are going to be discussing um, different kinds of espresso machines, like I said. So, I, I guess I should preface this by saying, originally, I have only come in contact with two different kinds of espresso machines, uh, the first two that I will mention in this list. But recently, I came across a third type, so I figured that, um, you know, it would be worthwhile to make a video on the subject, finally, because providing information on three topics, I think, you know, allows enough substance for a video as opposed to just two topics. So, the three different kinds of espresso machines that I have personally come across and that I imagine are, um, I can't really imagine any other kind of espresso machines besides these, so I'm pretty sure this list is um, comprehensive, but correct me if I'm wrong, please, in the comments down below. Um, but so the first one is uh, basically big espresso machines, sort of retail espresso machines, ones that make them in bulk. Um, the second kind are espresso machines that you that require you to put in some sort of effort into in order to brew the espresso. And the third kind is espresso machines where everything is already like the easiest kind of espresso machine is the third kind. Um, and I know that these titles are pretty vague, uh, <laughs> but once I explain, you know, the differences between these uh, three different kinds of espresso machines, hopefully these titles will make a bit more sense, <laughs> and you can understand why it's kind of hard to pin an exact title on each one. But, so the first kind, espresso machines in bulk, large espresso, machi espresso machines, these are ones that um, you... My mom came outside. Um, these are espresso machines that you would find, you know, in any sort of coffee shop, really. You know, say, a Starbucks, a Dunkin' Donuts, what have you. Um, these espresso machines contain, or have uh, huge containers on the top of them that hold the espresso beans, whole beans. And these are subsequently ground and brewed, you know, depending on whatever drink you have to make. And so obviously these kind of machines are perfect for retail settings where you are making a lot of espresso beverages with, you know, different amounts of espresso, what have you, different kinds of espresso. These machines are perfect because they are basically um, made to order. Now, I can be a little more specific about these, and I actually have noticed two different kinds of these types of espresso machines, at least in Starbucks's. So... The Starbucks that I work at currently has this first type of machine, which is the espresso machine that essentially the big container on top of it is a big circle. And I'd say probably about maybe mm, 80 to 90% of this big circle contains regular espresso beans. And then there's a small kind of mini circle inside of it that contains a specialty kind of espresso, whether it be blonde or decaf. Um, 
yeah, and this is apparently the older model of espresso machines used by Starbucks, and eventually these espresso machines will be phased out and Starbucks will, all Starbucks will be moving into the second kind of espresso machine that I'm about to mention, which are the large espresso machines that sort of have three rectangular um, basins as, you know, sort of the containers that hold the espresso beans as opposed to one big kind of circle container. And these machines, in my opinion, are better because they, these three separate containers, allow you to have all three kinds of espresso that Starbucks offers. So blonde espresso, decaf espresso, and regular espresso. All of them are accessible via one machine. The older model that I mentioned, the circle one, there's only two, you know, sort of places where espresso beans can be placed into. There's the big side of the circle, which is for regular espresso, and then the smaller one, like I said, is for the more specialty espressos. But obviously, as we can tell, there's only two basins, you know, two places for this espresso to go, so one of the unique kinds of espresso can't be included in there. So at the store that I work at currently, there's one machine that is a decaf espresso machine and one that is a blonde espresso machine, which obviously, you know, kind of can cause some trouble because say, for example, one of the espresso machines, you know, something is the matter with it and it isn't working, then you're down that specialty kind of espresso, whether it be decaf or blonde. But in the um, more updated model that Starbucks is moving towards, each machine itself has access to all three kinds of beans. So if one machine goes down, you know, obviously that will slow production, but it will still allow the baristas to make, you know, it has that, baristas have access to all the kinds of espresso, which is pretty nifty. The store that I used to work at in Starbucks originally had the big circle one, but then uh, kind of, semi-recently-ish after I started working there, we got the new kind, the three basin kind, which was like chef's kiss, the most amazing thing ever. I felt very thankful. And I'm eagerly looking forward to the day when <laughs> the Starbucks store that I work at currently gets them because they are amazing. Love them to death, the three basin. But both of these, again, are valuable and are more so suited for retail purposes. You obviously don't need this kind of huge espresso machine in your house. <laughs> I don't even know where you would have room for it, to be honest, the thing's huge. Um, but you know, you're not making, unless you're making espresso for 15 million friends that wanna come over, you don't really need a big machine like that for personal use. So that's the first kind, the big, you know, sort of bulk retail kind. The second kind, um, and third kind are both espresso machines mainly for personal use. And the difference between the two, like I said, is the second one requires you to actually put in some effort to brew the espresso. So what I mean by that is that you essentially have to press down the espresso into, um, I don't even know how you would call it. I guess I can describe it like this. So. For these kinds of espresso machines, you have a handle and there's a kind of a circle basin, <laughs> you could say, attached to the handle. And the circle thing is what you put onto the big espresso machine and that's where the espresso gets brewed out of. Now, like I said, for this kind of espresso machine, you actually need to take a little, um, kind of like a, a little, not a mallet, you know, just like it's a little tool that has a circle on the bottom that matches the um, circumference of the circle that the espresso goes into, and you essentially just have to press the espresso down, um, which is pretty easy. Uh, but the, that's the kind of espresso machine, for example, that my family has in our house. It's the kind where you um, have ground espresso, you know, you measure it out, you pour it into the circle basin, you press it down with the little plunger, and then you get to brew the espresso. So this one, in my opinion, between the two personal use ones is better just because, I don't know, like, 
well, I don't want to spoil what the third one is, but essentially this one, you know, I think uses espresso that is fresher. Um, and it's pretty fun to uh, push it down to make sure everything's nice and tightly packed in there. Um, I just think this one's a lot of fun. Me and my dad used to make espresso um, like that. Well, he would request me to do it, to be honest, um, but he would use it sometimes. So I have good memories associated um, with this kind of espresso machine. So yeah, that's the second kind. Basically personal use, but you have to put in some effort, i.e. plunging um, the espresso so that it's firmly packed in sort of that um, handle with the circle basin. Now the third kind is very similar to the second, again, for personal use. Um, but instead of having to, you know, grind espresso and press it down or whatever, it comes in little pods. So kind of similar to, you know, a K-cup machine, for example, for coffee. This is sort of the espresso equivalent where you have little pods of already ground espresso. You just pop it into, um, you know, whatever vessel holds it, whether it be like the handle with the circle basin or like actual K-cup machines where, you know, you put it into that hole and you put the top of the machine down. These kinds of espresso machines obviously are the easiest because everything is already made for you. You don't need to grind any espresso or plunge it or anything. Um, but again, like I said, I have found, at least in my personal experience, I have found that um, the espresso, the second kind of espresso machine where you have to plunge it yourself uh, results in a better tasting espresso. Again, this is just my opinion. I don't know if I, you know, have some sort of bias against it because the other kind of machine has it already packed, but that's my two cents on that anyways. Um, and yeah, that's it, right? Yeah, <laughs> that's all I have for today's video. Um, again, three different kinds of espresso machines, the big bulky kind for retail, two for personal use, one requires some effort, the other one is super easy. Also, I, I should say this, all of these espresso machines are totally viable and valuable. You know, if you, like I'm not trying to speak down on anybody who uses the third kind of espresso machine where, you know, you have pods and stuff, like you do you, you know, there's nothing wrong with it. Um, you know, sometimes people don't have a lot of time in the morning and, you know, they don't want to put in the effort to grind and plunge espresso. So each one of these is um, valuable and whichever one you choose to use is totally valid. Um, but again, my personal preference is the second kind for personal use simply because I have good memories associated with it and I think the plunging of the espresso is pretty fun too. But yes, so with that said, I can conclude today's video. <laughs> I hope that you guys are doing well. I hope that you are staying safe and sane, healthy, entertained, and motivated. If you're protesting, of course, I hope you're staying extra, extra, super duper safe. Please um, make sure you have an emergency contact or two on standby, somebody you trust, you know, a friend or a family member um, in case something, sorry, the sun is like directly in my face now, but the lighting's so good. Um, in case anything happens while you're protesting. Um, and yeah, I would say go vote, but it's, <laughs> that's already been done. I hope you voted. Um, currently, the election results, the uh, ballots are still being counted. Um, and I guess we will see in, you know, hopefully by the end of today, if not by tomorrow, um, who the next president of the United States will be. We'll see. <laughs> we will see. Um, but yeah, with all that said, I hope that you guys are having a great day and I hope you are staying safe and I will see you guys next week for another Barista Basics video, hopefully um, on Wednesday. We'll see, maybe. <laughs> if not, I will try to find some other day next week to film, if not Wednesday. But we shall see again. Um, I thank you again for checking the video out and I will see you guys next week. Take care. Bye-bye.